Hi everyone, welcome back to e-commerce success by Ad360. Today we're going to discuss some more about the return on click investment. This is a very fun and useful notion that we discovered yesterday in uh, the Baymart study. It's a term they coined themselves, so they came up with this notion of return on click investment to explain a few um, characteristics they noticed about how user interact with websites. I think it's super interesting, super insightful. So we're going to discuss some more today what, this, what it means, how to adapt based on this and what you must do in order to provide a good return on click investment to your website visitors. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment below. And uh, if you don't want to miss any of the videos I publish daily on this channel, you can activate the little uh, bell icon to get an alert whenever I release a new video. This is brought to you by Ad360. Ad360 is the easiest way to start advertising all over the web in just one click. So we automatically generate banners, uh, advertising campaigns, select websites and audiences so that you advertise in the right places and you get as many interesting uh, visitors and potential buyers as possible for your uh, budget. If you want to give it a try, there's a 14 day free trial available now on Shopify. So go to the uh, description, there's a link to go on the Shopify app store and download the app. Try for yourself and see if you like it or not. So let's go into today's content. So we're going to expand a bit on this article, which um, I'll share the link in the description below. So we quickly discussed this yesterday when we reviewed a online store and we went through a couple of uh, Baymod Institute studies. So as a reminder, I'm not, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Uh, from what I know, it's a research group that makes studies about e-commerce websites, uh, UX and... Um, um, UI and how to organize websites to be most efficient and I just find that content super interesting, super helpful, very insightful um, and so uh, so let's do a review today again. So and in particular I like very much this concept I uh, discovered yesterday about the return on click investment. It's super funny, um, very unusual, I never heard anybody else uh, do that so it's clearly a um, a creation from the Baymod Institute, so that's super cool. So let's read the article, try and understand what this means. So in business, we often look at return on investments or ROI to gauge if an investment will be worthwhile and later on evaluate if the investment proved to be good or bad. Okay. In the, so they made uh, 250 plus usability tests. So they go through online e-commerce websites. They use taste, uh, test groups. Uh, focus groups, user feedbacks, and they you know register all that information. It's super interesting. And so what they learned from these uh, tests uh, is they've observed that observed that users keep a similar score as the you know business return on investment when users decide what to click on a website. And so the Baymod Institute called that the return on click investment or Rocky maybe. <laughs> um, a click or a tap in the case of mobile is an active user decision. It's a choice about a desired path or action as well as a physical interaction. So a lot of people sometimes say, oh, it's just a click, it's super easy. But no, I know for a fact it's difficult. You have to ask for people to make a certain action. That's why you, you have call to actions on your website. You need to ask them to read more, find out more, see the product. That's why on my videos, I ask you to kindly click the like button. It only takes a second, but I know it's an effort and you know, you don't want to do it uh, naturally. We have to uh, entice you to do it, to ask you, you know, nicely to, to take the one second to click on the button. It's not only you know, a small effort, it's also a mental charge, right? And uh, the, the website is going to explain, this article is going to explain why. So, um, so please, you know, you have to, first you have to ask, so it can be annoying, but I'm asking each video, please like the video. And then also try to give a justification because if you understand what you're doing and the meaning of the action, you're more likely to do it. So if you like the video, it's going to be super helpful for us because YouTube takes very much into account how many likes a video got, especially in the first few views. So if you're watching this video, you're amongst the 10 or 20 first persons to watch this having a good rate of likes in the first few views of the video is really going to you know, uh, determine 
if this video is going to be shown to a larger audience by YouTube or not. Okay. So if you do that, if you're kind enough to like the, click on the like button, you're going to signal YouTube, you like this video, you get value out of it and it's going to be shared more broadly. Okay. So what I did now is I, uh, you know, gave an explanation, explained how you're going to, why it matters. So I justified the action and the effort, right? And you need to do the same on your website. So let's continue reading. A click often uh, means also committing to a page load, which is annoying, takes time, breaks, you know, the, the flow. So it's a bit like a mental damage as well. You know, you have to withstand that. Although, you know, although it's a very small one, of course, it's a very, you know, it's not a big problem to have to wait for a page load, but I understand it's breaking the flow and it can be annoying. Um, and quite possibly after the page loads, you also have new UI elements you have to interpret. So you're not really sure where you're going. You might discover a new page. You're not really sure what you're going to see. So all these things mean that uh, when the user click, they're making an investment of both time and mental effort. It's therefore extremely important that you deliver a return on that investment. So in our case, the return is uh, knowing that you're helping the channel grow and uh, knowing you're making good action, making sure other people can see these videos and become more happy, productive and successful. So just like in business, it's clear when there's a poor return on click investment, users will often unsolicited express their disappointment with the content they receive after clicking an element. Just like in business, after a few investments that yield an in inadequate return, few new investments will be made in the same area. So in that case, users abandon their browsing strategy or the site altogether. So if they click a couple of times and then they're not happy about what they find or they don't find what they expected to find, uh, they're just going to leave right away. So that's uh, very important. So in yesterday's video, we discussed about the number of categories you need to have on your website. So if you have to click several times, you have a category and then a subcategory, and then finally you have a list of products, and then you need to click on one product to get more info about the product. It's going. It's a way to uh, way too big of an event of an investment before you can actually get what you're looking for. In that case, the user is likely to have left. Uh, in the process. So in the article, they're going to deliver, I'm not going to read any, everything, it's quite long and I'm commenting as well, so it's taking more time. So let's go and read this formula, it's quite interesting. So there's a payoff, you know, so the um, what you get from the, the new page has to be greater than the effort required to, to get, that's you know, what it means. So the return, the value on the new page on the right has to be greater than the investment. So and the investment is deciding to click, leaving the current page, which you know, you're leaving something you know for something uncertain. So that's where some of the mental charge is coming from. You're loading the new page, which takes time, is annoying. And you have to interpret the new UI, which also takes time and effort and mental resources to try and understand where, where you got, what, what is this? And this is so super hard to understand because when you're on your website, you know your website by heart. You know that when you click here, you get there, you understand the structure makes sense because you decided on it, but it's really important to keep this in mind and it's not going to be as obvious for you, um, as obvious as it is for you, for the new people discovering your website. So this type of scorekeeping was observed extensively during our mobile e-commerce study and it was confirmed again during our most recent uh, usability study on category navigation. So that's what we discussed yesterday. Every time a user got a poor return on the click investment, they grew a little less confident in the site. That's super interesting. And we made several videos about uh, the trust in the website and how small elements, small red flags, like the missing favicon could you know, lead to people leaving the website altogether, even though it's a very small detail. So this you know, reminds me of that. It's a bit of a similar mechanism. So on mobile, users tend to grow JD particularly fast because load times and device performance is inferior to desktop. That's, that's super, super important. And we actually made a few videos before about why conversion rates on mobile devices is way lower than on desktop. And uh, if I remember correctly, we also made a video to analyze a study that said about two thirds of the uh, traffic on your website is most probably coming from mobile, but mobile is only one third of the purchases. So two third of the traffic, one third of the purchase. So that's really a problem happening here. Uh, and you know, that's 
that has a lot to do with uh, loading times and device performance uh, during the checkout process. Okay, let's continue. So while the payoff of a click is in large part determined by the resulting content, setting the right expectations for that content can be equally important. So that's super interesting. So before the user makes the click, what's before the click is also very important. So they have to understand exactly where they're going, what they're going to find, making sure the click to get somewhere is actually what they want to do, right? And they're not going somewhere that they didn't want to go to. And so they call that setting the right expectations. And that's another interesting concept. So user expectations can be shaped by good information sent. So what is this stuff? I, I hadn't heard about this concept either today, so I'm, I'm learning of new stuff. So I read this article, which is super interesting. I won't read it in detail today, but I put the link in the description because I find this uh, super interesting. So, um, so there's a study made by the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, and they're saying humans look for information on the web with the same food gathering techniques employed by ha animals namely by following its sense. So we're, we're, we're like looking and searching for information the, sh the same way we would look for uh, food in the nature. That's super interesting. Information sent is made of cues that people use to decide whether a path is um, interesting. That's the, the end of the, 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 the quote. Um, so that's super, super interesting. I'm not going to re read the rest of the article, but it's super interesting, super in insightful. So what this means is before you bring someone somewhere, it has to be super clear what they're going to find there. Okay. When sites uh, fail to align the user's expectations, uh, a link destinations with where it actually takes them, it's because either uh, a lack of information sent or to ambiguous information sent or free purposeful deception. So of course, you know, this is not good short-sighted it's not going to work in the long run because you alienate uh, users and it, when when they find out you trick them to get somewhere we also call that sometimes that dark pot pattern they're just going to turn on you and then leave the website and never come back so i agree with the baymod institute it's not really uh, good to do that lack of information sent that's you know an interesting example here you see the reviews here, if you click on reviews and it turns out there's no reviews yet, but you still have the category and you couldn't know beforehand there were no reviews. So you wasted a click, click on clicking on the reviews button to, you know, load the, the list of reviews only then to find out there are no reviews. This is very, um, this, you know, this is, this causes disappointment, anger sometimes, uh, and it's just like a little mental charge that, oh, you know, like a, a user's click. And the study says if you have a few of these, uh, it might lead people to leave. And you might think, oh, it's, but it's super, you know, it's a super minor, minor detail. But people can leave the website and stop a purchase act because of small things like that. So uh, what they're saying is, uh, as a solution, adding a review count, so maybe, you know, next review you have between brackets, you have the number of reviews. So if it's zero, people won't waste the click on the review section or hiding, disabling the section if there's no review. So these are uh, interesting examples of what information sent would be in that case. So in that case, you, know, you have this aura around it. You don't need to click to know there's nothing there. Uh, and it can work on the contrary. if you have in you know in brackets you have like 400 five and reviews you know th this tells us something this is the information sent tells us okay that there are plenty of reviews i'm going to find a ton of information let me click here to, to you know, maybe to just read a few so you can also on the you know on the other hand you can uh, promote certain uh, pathways and certain actions on your website by increasing the uh, information sent so maybe if you want people to do a click, so in addition to having a, a big CTA button, maybe below the button, say something like, you know, you click here and you'll find, you know, and say something like, you know, the product is in stock or, you know, it has a great reviews, maybe putting reviews below or saying, you know, payment in four installments available or something like that. All these little cues that you give are going to increase the probability of people uh, not being disappointed afterwards. Okay, here in the, 
another example I found funny. So some uh, users were uh, very disappointed with this website, although they liked the beautiful imagery. Uh, a user clicked on this uh, image in the middle, you see, with this table and the rug, and they were expecting to find more information about the table. And the image actually leads to a sale on the rug category. And of course it's written, if you read the small print at the bottom, you can read it. It's about rugs, but people just don't read uh, on the website. They skim through, they, you know, they go through quickly, you know, with their eyeballs, you know, going on diagonals and, and they're not going to read every line. So here this user thought this was about the table just because of the image uh, construction, uh, but it's actually about the rug. So this can be misleading and this can be very uh, uh, disappointing, reducing the return on, on the click investment. So you have to be super clear with your pictures. What is the picture about? What, what is it I, I am uh, selling and, and promoting on that picture? I, I, I see this frequently on hero images on your website. Uh, I think a couple of days ago we reviewed a website selling um, handmade um, covers for your table, made in cotton and nice materials, biodegradable and all that stuff. The first image, there was a big table, a lot of stuff on the table. It wasn't re really clear if the website was selling tables or food or silverware or the, or the cover. And there wasn't a big title and something to give us a cue. And of course for you, if you're, if you're spending you know, days, weeks, months working on your covers, it's obvious to you what you're selling. So for you, this image represents your covers and you, re you recognize them because you know them. So you see the picture, you notice immediately your cover. But for someone who don't know your, your website is about covers, you don't, they don't know about your skills, they don't know about your products, and they see this you know, image with multiple different stuff, it's not super clear what, what it is about. So you have to be super clear with your uh, pictures about what do they represent for someone you know, coming at it with a fresh uh, mind and fresh eyes. Okay, okay. let's go to the, um, the end of the article. I'll let you read the rest. Um, okay, so users keep score. So each time a site fails to deliver an adequate return on the user's click investment, a dent is made on the users in the user's confidence and experience of the site. Throughout our usability studies, it has become evident that users are, are obviously keeping score subconsciously, of course. So they're not actually counting, but that's you know mental uh, exercise or mental you know thing that happens uh, subconsciously, and they aren't forgiving. So negative returns make more of a mental impact than positive ones. That's also a nice thing to remember. Maybe it takes just one or two negative experiences to ruin the entire thing. And again, this reminded of the favicon. You can have a very beautiful website, a lot of things are right. If you're missing the favicon, it's going to mess the entire thing up. So you have to be really careful about these small details. It only takes a few negative clicks investments to outshine numerous positive ones. Super interesting. So given that the return on click investment calculation is applied to the entire site, not just particular area or process, if you have you know, something that doesn't work, it's going to uh, outshine all the rest and they might leave the website entirely. Okay? As a rule of thumb, if little or zero new information is presented upon a click, you'll want to reevaluate the step. Is it really necessary? So that's what we discussed yesterday about the subcategories, the number of categories you need to have. And I was of the opinion with the website yesterday, given they have um, a few products, they shouldn't have these subcategories. Uh, so either remove steps that are not necessary or add more information on the page. So I also said that if you want to keep these, you know, intermediate categories, subcategories, pages, add more info, add more descriptions, add stories so that you increase the value. So either you remove one click or you increase the value in exchange of the click. Um, Okay, and lastly, that's super in interesting. So spotting if the wrong expectations are set is often a little more tricky to determine, especially for the people working on the site as they know what to expect from their own site and are therefore rarely misled by its copy. So what, that's what I was discussing earlier. You know you very much your site, your brand, your products, so you're not very likely to be misled by the copy. You wrote the copy or you, you see it every day. So um, 
it's super important to observe outside users, going through your site to spot this type of ambiguities. So do usability tests, do focus groups if you can. If you cannot, ask your friends, loved ones, family for an honest feedback. Uh, watch them look at your site and see if they understand. Watch them go through the entire process of finding the product that they want on your website, adding it to the cart, going through the checkout process. Look if everything is really as obvious as you think it is, because it might not be. And uh, so finally, the consistently positive return on investment, click on investment, can make the difference between a seamless shopping experience and a site that's perceived as cumbersome or convoluted. Therefore, whenever you're designing links and page flows, closely consider the user's return on click investment. Are you setting the right expectations? And are you delivering on those promises? It's a nice conclusion. So hopefully you found, you found that super interesting. I sure did. I uh, found this uh, insightful, very interesting, and uh, funny at the same time, a very unique concept, but it makes a ton of sense. And I think a lot of you might agree it's something we do, all of us, subconsciously. But seeing it here and having the few advice, like, you know, fixing if there's no review disabled or hide or add more information sent around it so people know what to expect, they know where they're going, they understand the navigation more clearly. All these things are super important. And, uh, and this last tip, show your website to outside people that have a different perspective. I think that's a golden tip. It's really, really going to be super valuable. I really encourage you, especially if you just finish your website or redid it or you're new to e-commerce, show your website to as many different people as you can and observe their reaction and fix anything that needs to be fix, uh, fixed. Okay, thank you so much. If you have any questions, any requests for future article to be analyzed, uh, any concepts you'd like me to comment on, feel free to share them in the description below uh, in the comments. Um, I'd be super interested in seeing your opinion. So, and uh, this can help us, you know, get out more interesting content for, you know, uh, merchants. And at the end of the day, my goal is to make as interesting videos as possible so that they're entertaining, they provide value, and they help you increase your shop and your results. If you liked all of that, and if you didn't already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It's really helpful. It makes sure more people are going to see this and get value out of these videos. I thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.